Mars. They'll be leaving day after tomorrow. I wonder if they'll make it. And what they'll find if they do. Life, maybe. Life of some sort. Perhaps someday we'll have a telescope powerful enough to see that far. That's the highest priority secret message we've ever had in the Pentagon. And we've had some. How does it feel to be the head of a project as immense as this one? Truthfully, it's a little terrifying. Uh, but you mustn't print that, Steve. Well, I should think it would be terrifying. I know enough about rocket propulsion to believe there's an outside chance you'll make it there. But aren't you worried about getting back? I used to climb the Swiss Alps. Our greatest ambition then was to climb the highest possible peak. We worried later about getting back. Can I print that, Doctor? If you wish. Well, Steve, this is a plumb assignment for you. Making a trip of this sort merely to report what you see. Yep, I'm the only one going who isn't a scientist. You deserve it. You made a wonderful reputation as a war correspondent. You've been reading the jacket cover of my last book. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lane. I once heard of a man who climbed a higher mountain than anyone else alive. But he was never able to get down again. What's left of him is still up there. The point is, Steve, he made it. Where are you going? Pre-flight interviews with everybody making the trip. I think I've gotten as much from Dr. Lane as he's going to give. Oh, I'll give you the scientific reason why I wanted to I'm the non-scientist, remember, Doctor? <laughs> no, I want to write about the personal human reasons why a man would risk death to go out into space. You've given me yours. I gather you don't think they're too good. I'm on my way to see Jim Barker. Maybe your chief engineer has a different reason for wanting to go. Oh, I'm sure he must have. Steve, I'm a little puzzled. You're going to write this all up, but how are you going to file a story on Mars to be printed back here? Well, General, I'm afraid I can't give you the answer to that one yet. But don't forget, while en route, we're going to drop these self-propelled space cylinders aimed at Earth. They should land here. We'll be waiting for them. See you tomorrow at the takeoff. So long. And so the exact time and place of the takeoff will remain a closely guarded secret. As to the immediate reactions to the sensational announcement, Congress is demanding to know why knowledge of so stupendous an undertaking has been kept so long from the public. Several senators have even questioned the advisability of the very project itself. The feeling expressed by many of them was that we should stay where we are. Government officials were quick to label these remarks as isolationists. Well, here we go again. Well, let's get on with the interview. You know, if we make it, both the isolationists and the interventionists will take the vows. Wait a minute. You said, if we make it. Tell me, Jim, what do you really think our chances are of getting there? Well, everything we know about astronomy, propulsion, and rocket navigation tells us that we will. Yeah, but there's a lot we don't know. There's a whole universe out there, Steve, the totally unknown, beyond anyone's comprehension. We try to figure it out when we're kids, but we never can. Yeah. Yeah, let me see if I can't frame my lead article featuring you. You see, I want to accent the human terms about Jim Barker, chief engineer, whose genius was largely responsible for the construction of the rocket. The man with a dream who couldn't live or think or breathe anything else. who worked and planned for years to make this expedition possible. The man with a skylight in his Baltimore apartment so he could sleep under the stars. You make it sound poetic. Excuse me. Oh, how are you, Carol? 
Carroll. I'd like you to meet Steve Abbott. He's the newspaper man that's going on, on the trip with us. Uh, Steve, this is Carol Stafford. How do you do? Hello. Uh, what are you doing here, Carol? We had a date tonight, Jim. Oh, uh, he held me up. Oh, yes, I can see you're all dressed to go out. A drink? No. I understand you wanted to interview me, Mr. Abbott. Well, you couldn't have picked a better time. I'm just in the mood to tell the story of my life. Father was a physicist. Taught her a lot. She's a smart girl. I certainly am. She learned spaceship engineering in only three years. Spending each day right at the elbow of Mr. Jim Barker. Mr. Abbott, do you think three years is too long to spend at somebody's elbow? Steve. Call me Steve. I wasn't going to let her take a trip like this, but uh, she learned so much she became indispensable. I couldn't replace her. So you see, Mr. Abbott, what you're looking at is an indispensable scientific unit. The first assistant to the pilot of a rocket ship. Well, I know you have the whole story. I sure have. Professor William Jackson is here, sir. Tell him to come in. Professor? Be right with you. I have only five minutes there waiting to take me to a television broadcast. I thought I was handling public relations. Look here, I don't even know you. I take the time and trouble to come to your hotel. Because I haven't been able to catch up with you. It was agreed that none of us were to appear on radio or TV. Because once we start giving out interviews at random and for commercial gain... The world has a right to my opinions and observations. That's why I was invited on this trip to make observations, gather geological, chemical, astronomical data. Look, Professor Jackson, you're a famous man, one of the outstanding scholars of our time. That's why you're coming with us. But there'll be no speeches on TV. Hello? Get me Dr. Lane at the Radcliffe. I'm considered a scholar, but unfortunately, that hasn't made me rich. On the contrary, it's left me quite poor. I'm leaving behind an ailing wife, a daughter whose husband was killed in the war, two young grandchildren. Oh, just a minute, Doctor. I was to be given $3,000 for my appearance on television. I wanted to leave it with them. Oh, sorry, Doctor. Yes, I wanted to talk to you, but it isn't important. It can wait. Yeah, I'll see you later. If you do a good job on TV, it'll save me the trouble of writing it. So go ahead. Thank you. See you tonight when the police escort picks us up. Only five of us. Seems lonely already. Well, no matter how much weight we could carry. I would like to have asked a dozen more people. 
Hey, what happens when the rocket finally levels off? Do we walk on the walls? <laughs> oh, no. Our gyro mechanism keeps this cabin vertical at all times. When we're in horizontal flight, that hatch there will lead to the tail sections. You better go there and lie down and strap yourself in. All right, Carol, turn on the oxygen pressure for takeoff. Oxygen okay. Control tower, Barker calling. Hello, Jim. This is Ed in the control tower. Check my radio. Give me a reading. Abel George Baker, ready. Over. Check. Abel George Baker, ready. It's okay, thanks, Ed. We're ready for takeoff. Ground clear. All ready for takeoff. And Jim, good luck, fella. Thanks, Ed. I'll be seeing you. I hope. All right, are you ready, Dr. Lane? All ready. Ten seconds to take off. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That you, Steve? You've been out in space two days now. Got anything to report? Sure have. Big news. Carol Stafford floated up to the top of the rocket. She kept bumping her head until we got the magnetic field stabilizer to equalize the gravitational pull. And how do you like those for big words? <laughs> Here's Jim Barker. We'll give you the official rundown. Everything is going according to schedule. At the present rate, we should be out of the orbit of the moon in 10 or 12 hours. After that, it should be clear sailing. Anything else, over? Jim, the press association here wants to know whether we'll get some pictures to go with Steve Abbott's stories. Over. We'll launch our first space cylinder in 24 hours. There'll be photographs and observations in that. If we lose radio contact, Steve can send all his stuff in the cylinder. Anything else, over? That's all for now, Jim. Over. OK. Rocket ship MARS signing off for now. So long. I'm glad we don't have to send all the technical meter readings. It was a good idea you had, Doctor, of having them transmitted automatically by radio. And I think it'd be a good idea if you got a little rest, Jim. You've been there ever since takeoff. Well, I kind of hate to leave. Don't be heroic, Jim. Two days without a break is too long. Dr. Lane and I'll take over. Well, keep your eye on the gravitational indicator. If there's any variation, call me. Go on, Jim. Remember, I helped to design that indicator. I guess I must be tired. I'll see you later. <laughs> Mother Earth looks mighty good from here. Close enough to the man in the moon to talk to him. If you do talk to him, be careful what you say. The moon could be a deadly menace to us. Degrees. The gravitational pull of the moon. We'll have to use power to pull out. Everybody take your stations. Where's Jackson? Professor Jackson. Coming. All right, Carol, the pressure.
us you're okay. You ready? We won't land on the moon. Well, it's finally happened. We've lost contact with the rocket ship. You'd better inform the general. Your family, Professor? My two grandchildren. They're beautiful. I often wish I'd married and had a family. But astronomy and engineering have taken up almost all of my life. My life's been sheltered but full. Things I've learned, I've passed on to others. You talk as if you were already dead. You really believe we're going to come back? Sure I do. Personally, I feel this rocket is my coffin would have expected that attitude from you. As long as we remain alive, I'll contribute all that I know to the success of the expedition. In the meantime, Professor, you're contributing an awful lot of gloom. He's contributed more than any of us. A real wife, a home, two lovely grandchildren. I'd trade ten trips to Mars for that. Then you shouldn't have come along, Carol. Jim Barker, engineering genius. Jim? Skip it. It's just that being confined like this has gotten on my nerves. Mine, too. You listening, Carol? To what? I think that you are a prize package. Is this for Jim's benefit? And very feminine. He likes you. I sure do, Mr. Engineer. And I don't have to look in a test tube to find out. Let's cut out this bickering. I am not bickering. Nice try, but it didn't get open. Thanks, Eddie. Well, the Earth seems so big when you're on it. And from out here, so small and nothing. It's like closing your eyes in the dark. And suddenly there you are, alone with your soul. You're homesick, Steve. No, Professor, I haven't got a home. Sometimes I wonder who I am. Who any of us are. There was once a theory advanced that the universe is a living, giant being and that we, as human beings, made in its image, are miniature universes in ourselves, containing millions of corpuscles. The components of each corpuscle imagine themselves to be in a complete world of their own, though they are aware of the universe of other worlds around them. Oh, that's fantastic. Is it? I wonder. We understand so very little, really. If space is limitless and endless, then don't you see, the opposite must be true, too. Smallness never ends either, but continues being tinier and tinier, just as the enormity of the universe becomes more and more enormous. Doctor, you're giving me the creeps. What happens to us when we die? The whole universe dies, just as the universe in which we ourselves live may someday be no more. But there are endless universes beyond our own. I know the theory, but it makes this trip seem small and futile. If we're simply going from one corpuscle and some giant being to another, what will we find? Crossing over may provide some of the answers to things man has wanted to know since the beginning of time. If so, we'll be swallowed in space and forgotten. Holy mackerel, what's this? Come here, quick. What is it? I don't know. It looks as though the Earth's being bombarded. It isn't, though. It's a storm of meteors. They're traveling at tremendous speed. When they reach the atmosphere around the Earth, the friction makes them explode and disintegrate. We've all seen such fragments on summer nights. Most people call them shooting stars. 
Tell me, Doctor, are we apt to run into such a storm out here? It's possible. No contact, sir. Not for 48 hours now. From this point on, I'm afraid we'll have to depend on their space cylinders. Jim, what's the time and position? Have you finished with those computations for jettisoning this space cylinder? Almost. Just a second. We are now at approximately 2 degrees S400X 102 solar time. Well, that's about all there is to go. I hope the homing device works. I'd hate to have this land in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Didn't Steve have something to go? Oh, yes. Would you mind seeing if Steve's material is ready yet? Of course, Professor. Everything's in the space cylinder but your notes. I wouldn't want to hold up a space cylinder, but if the last paragraph isn't up to my usual high standard, it'll be your fault for rushing me. How do you find so much to write about? Isn't easy. This trip's getting a little monotonous. Too monotonous? You feel that bitter about him? I don't know what you mean. Revenge, huh? That ought to make him good and mad. I don't intend to tell him. How can you make a guy jealous if he doesn't know about it? It's possible. Oh, glad to have been of service. What's the matter with you? For a lady scientist, you aren't very objective. No. I guess I haven't been. Next time you get sore at him, call on me. Anytime. You shouldn't wait to the last minute before getting your notes to me. Well, it's a big hurry. We've plenty of time and space. I hope the homing apparatus on this cylinder functions properly. trouble getting that space cylinder off? Why, no, of course not. Heavens, we're heading right in. This is going to destroy us. We'll have to get off. That means we'll have to go off course. We have no other choice. All right, everybody, take your stations. Drive yourselves in. We'll have to give her full speed. Are you ready, Dr. Lane? Ready. Here goes. Right. 
through it. Is everybody all right? Yes, sir. Right. I think we're all clear now, but we're considerably off course. Jim, you better check the ship for damage, and Carol and I will plot the course. Steve, you and the professor check the tail section for any possible damage, especially the wires and cables. I'll check forward and see what I can find there. and something worse. Take a look. Our landing gear. We got our radio batteries, too. That's what cut the cable, probably shorted it. Can it be fixed? I think Jim can fix the cable all right, but not the batteries in that shaft. Not a chance in the world. How we land? Maybe we won't. Well, folks, we have a real problem. The landing gear we depended on is now useless. We're going to have to crash land. Can't we use the jets to ease us down? We may have to, but it will eat into our fuel supply. Better to use some of that to find a favorable landing spot. You have to make a choice. We can make it back to Earth and attempt a landing there, or we can try a landing on Mars. The choice is up to you. Well, I'm pretty fond of the world myself even if it's only a little corpuscle. If we get back, maybe we can make another trip. Not much chance of that. If anything, it would discourage future flights. Assuming anyone does survive on Mars, what will he be able to do? Will he be able to report back what he finds? There's a remote possibility. The atomic power head might not have been damaged too much to get off a space cylinder. It doesn't look very promising either way. But if there's any chance of sending back any data or information about Mars, I'm in favor of going on. After all, that was the object of our flight. Our survival is of secondary importance. We can be on Mars within 24 hours. At least that's the shorter trip. If that's an advantage under the circumstances. We're almost at the top of that mountain you wanted to climb. What do you think, Carol? Well, it doesn't look like we're going to come out alive either way. But after all, we did set out to do something. That says it for me. I knew that it would. OK. I'll make it unanimous. Good. I'm glad we're all together in spirit, too. Jim, what's your plan? Well, I can't tell yet. Not till I see the terrain. We'll have to use our jets to look around, but it'll be rough at best. Well, it's in your hands. Strap yourselves in. What about you, Jim? Forget about me. I see a place to land. If we make it, we may be able to take off from it. He's 
coming around now. It's nothing serious. Don't tell me we made it. Christ must have caused the avalanche. The snow's covered us completely. Oh, no, it hasn't. Look over here. They look like chimneys. They're regularly spaced. They may be the work of living creatures. Come on, let's go out and have a look at them. Are you all right? Yeah, sure. I just feel a little short of breath. Well, no wonder. We'd better put on our oxygen masks. of stone or brick, and very well made, too. Obviously by civilized creatures of some sort. Mm. But it's very old, very. Maybe the race is extinct now. That's being a little pessimistic, Professor. No, no, Professor Jackson may be right. We know that ages ago, Mars was a much warmer planet. In cooling off, it lost much of its atmosphere. If people did live here, it may well be that the change killed them off. They don't seem to serve any purpose, do they? They may have been erected as some sort of religious symbols, like the great stones the Druids erected at Stonehenge or the pyramids in Egypt. Well, let's follow them along and see if there's any change in them. Yeah. We have been expecting you. Expecting? You... You speak English? For many years, we have picked up your radio broadcasts and deciphered them. Many of us have even learned to speak some of your languages. I am Ikron, president of our council which rules this planet. We are happy to meet you and honored by the presence of your enemies. You say you pick up our broadcasts? Yes, your first two cylinders arrived back on Earth safely. Since then, they have lost contact with you, and there is a worldwide vigil awaiting news of your party. Can we get through to them? No. Although for years we have been able to receive broadcasts, we are still unable to send them. Our best efforts have been reported by Earthmen only as faint signals coming from Mars. You will come with us now. You may do the same. You won't need them anymore. Hey, this thing's moving. Yes, our cities are underground. extract hydrogen and oxygen. You'll find that we live rather well. It's a masterpiece of understatement. I think the council is waiting. You will find we have much in common. 
As you have no doubt already observed, we owe our continued existence here to science. All of our facilities will be placed at your disposal. Thank you. You made us feel very welcome. And I don't think that scientists have ever had a richer field to explore. As you know, we have tried interplanetary flights. Though for all our science, we have had no success such as this. I am very much interested in what you have done. Tell me, this atomic power, which I have heard so much about in broadcasts from your world. Uh, just a moment, Icon. We can exchange questions and answers endlessly. There'd be time for that. Now I suggest that our visitors be permitted to rest and refresh themselves. This is Telemar, our senior advisor and former chief of our council. Terrace will show you to your dwelling, and after you have had time to adjust yourselves, we will talk further. Thank you. This is where you will live. Your sleeping rooms and other quarters are on either side. Thank you. What I want to see is the kitchen. The kitchen? Yes, where food is prepared. Oh, we don't have kitchens. We call it the food laboratory, and we have a large one for each district. You order your food, and it is delivered, ready to be served. This is a woman's paradise. As a matter of fact, I assumed you might be hungry and ordered some things for you. They should be here by now. Everything is here, ready to be eaten. When you've finished, you just put everything back, close it up, and press this button. That's all there is to it. No dishwashing? Well, that's taken care of mechanically. Mars, I love you. Oh, yes. A tailor will be here to measure you for your wardrobe. You'll be needing clothes, of course. You mean, uh... You can have more like those if you wish. No, no, we wouldn't think of it. But on Mars, do as the Martians do. <laughs> we find these very comfortable. Well, I'll leave you now. I know you're tired and hungry. If you want me, you can reach me over the speaker. Thank you. Well, if no one objects, I think I'll start setting out the food. Yeah, I'll help you. I can hardly wait to see their chemical laboratories. What a remarkable place. The scientific skills and techniques of these people are truly incredible. A man could spend years doing research here. Mm. And you were all set to die. You were talking about Mars being the top of some big mountain we just climbed. Well, how do you propose we get back down? And you're talking about doing years of research. What good will it do if we can't get the information back to Earth? Or are we planning to spend the rest of our lives here? I can think of worse places to spend the rest of our lives. No, no, Jim is right. Our whole project is a failure unless we can get our findings back to Earth. But how? Our rocket is wrecked. Can we build another? I don't know that yet. We might be able to salvage some of the essential parts and maybe build others. But it's a big job and we'll need the help of the government here. Without it, we don't stand a chance. Even with it, it's no sure thing. I don't know why they wouldn't help us. Icron said they were interested in interplanetary flight. Well, there's only one way to find out. As soon as we get settled, Jim and I will go before the Council and ask for their assistance. If our rocket ship is to be reconstructed, we'll need all the help you can give us. That's why we are here, to ask for your approval and assistance. But do you really think the rocket can be repaired? That depends on how much of it can be salvaged. There shouldn't be too much trouble to construct a new shell. But the big problem will be if the atomic power heads have been destroyed. Well, in that case, you could not undertake such a flight. Well, we'd have to work out some substitute, possibly from your corium. We will send a party to salvage your ship whenever you are ready. We want to help. However, this is a matter that must be discussed by our consul. We will let you know our decision shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was anxious that it was not made to sound too easy. However, the approval will be granted. Do you still object to my plan? To destroy these people and all the people on the world as well? Yes, I do. We will build others from the same design. A fleet of them, a hundred fleets. And when we finish with the ruins of their world, what then? A plan to conquer the universe? More rocket ships? Where is the end of it? I seek only the sanctuary of a place to live for our people. Our planet is dying. 
The corium will be gone. What plan do you suggest to save ourselves? That we make a pact with them for certain areas of the earth. The people who have come here have no power or authority to make pacts. Once we let them escape, once their ship is gone, it may well be our last chance for survival. Surely they'll make other trips. What if they return in power and force and conquer us? They will kill us. I ask for a vote of the council. My plan or Tillamar's? Icron. Tillamar. Tillamar. Icron's plan is carried by a vote of four to three. I need hardly caution, senior counselor, of the secrecy of this decision. The space travelers will not be warned. We will let them proceed with the rebuilding of their ship in the naive belief that we will let them return to Earth. Once the rocket is ready, they will become our prisoners. Fellow counselors, soon now, soon, the evacuation from a dead planet will begin. First the armies, then the civilians. This factory you've given us to work in is certainly ideal for our purpose. Some of those amazing new light metals you've shown me should be able to take the pressure perfectly. I have developed several that I think will be suitable. And this assistant that I'm sending to you will see that you have the very best workmen available. You've undertaken quite a job, my friend. Well, most of the instruments are still intact. Oh, I don't think it should be too difficult for Jim Justin. Not with your knowledge and advice available to him. You're right, Dr. Lane. Justin is our most eminent physicist and engineer. You couldn't be in better hands. I've already learned that. And I have arranged for our astronomers to put aside their present projects and help you make any observations necessary to plot your return trip. How long do you think it's going to take? Well, the sooner the better. As you know, when we took off, the Earth and Mars were at their closest. The distance between them grows greater every day, as does the amount of fuel we'll need. That, Doctor, is our big problem. As you know, the atomic power heads were destroyed in the crash. But from what Justin tells me, I think we should be able to substitute corium. I hope so. Interplanetary flight has always been a very great interest of mine. Feel free to call on us if you need any help. That from Icron is a very generous offer. Corium is our most precious substance. Are you Jim? Mm-hmm, that's right. Your new assistant has arrived. Oh, thanks. Show me. There's no one to show in. I'm your new assistant. My name's Alita. What's the matter? I is something wrong? Oh, no. Uh, no, no, it's just that I, uh... I... Oh, sit down. I'm, uh... I'm sort of puzzled over these, uh... Uh, these new metals. Well, this is the one you want. Both can take the pressure, but this has a better coefficient of expansion for temperature variations. You'll do. I should have known Justin knew what he was doing. You like him? Oh, I think he's a wonderful man. Then I think you'll do, too. He's my father. Oh, sure. Oh, well, uh, uh, let's get to work. Um, uh, Say, his food is really great. There's a reason. And those hydroponic chemicals they use, they put every vitamin we know of, plus several other tissue-building elements. No wonder there's so few sick people here. These are really delicious. And amazing people. Great illustration of what science can do. Who would think that forced to live underground, they have mastered the highly complex problem of raising food to survive on? In a way, they're better off. Instead of fields in the open, subject to the uncertainties of weather, they have great tanks, miles of them. With their controlled temperatures, they raise practically everything they wish. They've made this into a kind of Garden of Eden. You'll excuse me? You're not going back to the lab again. I have to. I have a few problems I have to solve. Oh, can I help you? Can I come with you? Thanks, Carol, but no. I'll be all right. want some more revenge, just whistle. <sighs> Poor Steve. So busy carrying a typewriter around the world with him, 
that he never had time to fall in love. Then he met a lady scientist. You're not in love with me. No? No, just making it up. Don't ever believe anything a writer says, especially a newspaper writer. Besides, we've nothing in common. I bet you've never been to a football game or seen the Dodgers in action at Ebbets Field. Well, it makes sense. Female scientist goes for male scientist. Two of a kind. Me? I'm just a guy. You know, I think we both need a couple drinks. I've just made a big play for you. I know. No soap, huh? No soap, Steve. But you're wrong. I have been to lots of football games. I'm really not such a test tube specimen as you seem to think. And if I'm an idiot about Jim, it's something I can't help. Maybe you should try harder. I lost a magnetic gauge. I thought I might have dropped it in here today. You won't need it until tomorrow. If I find it, I'll have it put aside for you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. to know when they're going to be able to fly back to Earth. It's too early to tell yet. I would have learned more if the girl hadn't interrupted me. Well, she doesn't suspect you. Oh, no, I'm sure of that. Good. I must be sure that they're concealing nothing from me. Yes, sir. Well, I didn't expect to find you working tonight. I was talking to father about this at dinner. He gave me an idea. I couldn't wait to try it out. Yes? Well, he thinks if we increase the temperature more rapidly, the molecules will release more energy. It's what you call a higher sparking power for the trigger mechanism. I hope he's right. If he is, it'll save us a lot of time. Is it ready? Almost. You can connect those cables now. I know it'll work this time. That's fine. Well, this will tell the story. It's got to spark to at least 200 or we'll never get off the ground. All right, switch on. Tell Dr. Lane right away. You go ahead. I'll close up here.
This is a very good one. That's the earth, but it's partially obscured by mist. Yes, and it's getting further away every day. We tested the new firing mechanism and it works. Did it register 200? It went to almost 300. You mean we'll actually be able to get back? Easily. It'll take about a week or so to get it built to scale and get it installed. But you and Carol can start figuring out the fuel load now. As of what date? You know, the distance is widening. Figure it a month from now. Fine. That'll give everyone time to gather up whatever we want to take back. Come, Carol. Yes, there's no question about it. They will be able to take off for their own planet. Let them think so. Do you know how long before they'll be ready? No, but I'll find out in time. Good. I want them to complete their work. Then we'll step in. But there can be no doubt about it. I heard it myself. Why does he act this way? I took it for granted that we'd show him everything we know. From what a leader reports, he plans to let you complete your work and then at the last minute take it away from you. My advice to you is to leave before he realizes that you're ready to take off. But we can't. We let it be known only this morning that we plan to take off in a month. But you could be ready in two weeks, couldn't you? Oh, it's useless. He has spies everywhere that know every step of our progress. Jim, I think I know something we can do. Try to get that checked and finish as soon as you can. It's almost ready. <coughs> Don't go in there. It might explode. What is it? What happened? I don't know. I was working and suddenly there was a great flash and explosion behind me. damage? Just the trigger mechanism. It will take at least another month to replace it. That long? Maybe longer. Oh, no. Everybody can go home now. There's nothing more you can do today. Beautiful performance. trouble. It's serious. Jim, are you hurt? No, no. Well, is the rocket damaged? No, but I want everyone to think it is. I faked an explosion. I've learned there's a plot to keep us from leaving. Icron's government plans to take the rocket away from us as soon as it's finished. Are you sure of this? Positive. Well, what can we do? We can leave in two weeks. They think it's going to take at least another month for us to repair the damage. Well, can we get away without their knowing it? It's our only chance. We've got to try. Well, we better tell the others right away. No, no, not yet. It's too dangerous a secret. Just get them to speed up their work. Jim, you're tired. You ought to try and get a little rest and relax. Yes, I intend to, tonight. I think maybe we'll play a little bridge. Bridge? If you introduce that game on this planet, the people will never forgive you. Four heart. Pass. Bye. Bye. Well, I've got good help for you. That's wonderful support. I'll make it, easily. Where did you ever learn to play bridge? Jim taught me. I'm surprised at you, Carol. Haven't you noticed that Jim and Alita are uh, 
That way. You're supposed to say it isn't true. Of course it isn't true. Sit down, Jim. I'll go after her. Why did you say a thing like that? Wake up, genius. I was once a Lonely Hearts editor. Sorry that happened. I understand. No, I don't think you do. Oh, yes, I do. You even taught me that. Your work means everything. Then I must be crazy. How many years you been in love with him? Three. How many tears do you think it'll take to wash out three years? Go away, Steve. I can't. I'm about to win a game for myself. <laughs> you ever play solitaire? I've been playing it for a long time. Please go. But it gets tiresome, just like some girls I know. What do you mean? You've been crying for exactly one hour and 17 minutes. Will nobody ask you to sit in on it? No, it's the idiot in me. Steve. That gets tiresome, too. All right, that'll be all for today, fellas. All right. I'd like to make that installation myself. Oh, and by the way, you'll have tomorrow off. There won't be anything for you to do until the day after. Well, thanks. They don't know it, but they've done their last work on this baby. What about that? The emergency lights? Two minutes work. I can do that after takeoff. You know, I can't believe it. It's finished. Ready to go. It's great, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. What's the matter, Alita? You'll be going. Of course, I'm happy for your sake. You'll be able to get back now. That's right. I'll be leaving, won't I? Well, it isn't as though you're going so far. After all, the Earth is only 35 or 40 million miles from here. You know, the way we've constructed this thing, there's a good chance we might be able to bring back a couple of extra people. I didn't want to tell you until I was sure of it. But you're going back with me. You and your father. No. Why? There's a reason why our government wants a rocket ship. Ten years from now, there'll be no more Corium. After that, all life here will be extinct. Unless something is done. You mean what Icon wants to do? No, there are other solutions. Yes, but unfortunately, he's in power. There's Tillamar. He's a great leader. It'd be better for the people of our planet if he and my father went. Yes, but can we trust Tillamar? Can we tell anyone we're ready for takeoff? Alita, if I confide in Tillamar, I'm risking the fate of my whole group. Five people? Yes, I see your point. Whatever we decide here, you have my promise that I will not reveal your plan. Will you yourself, Tillamar, come with us as spokesman for your planet? As a statesman to plead your cause. We pick up Earth's broadcast, Tillamar, and you can deliver whatever news there is from the world beyond. Perhaps to replace Corium, Earth will grant us uranium in exchange for many things we have here. Inventions far beyond anything Earthmen have yet achieved. Interplanetary trade relations. You'll go then, Tillamar. Yes, I will go. Though once I am gone, Icron will declare me a traitor. Oh, perhaps at first. But when you have talked to our people through Earth's broadcast, when you tell them of your plan and that you are on a mission for them, there will be a new vote in the Council. Icron will be overthrown. Well, how can you be sure of that? Because I will stay here as your representative and organize the active opposition. But... Don't worry, Alita. You are going, not I. But I'll see you again. I have confidence in Tillamar that I will. I've called you all together to tell you that thanks to Jim, the repairs on the rocket ship are now complete. 
We'll take off tomorrow. Well, how do you know it'll function properly? You haven't been able to make any real tests. That's the chance we'll have to take. But I'm positive it'll work. What's to keep them from stopping us? That's just it. They don't know that it's ready. And if we handle it right and are very careful, we'll be gone before they know it. We've worked out plans whereby each one of us will enter the ship tomorrow at different times without arousing suspicion and remain there until takeoff. Everything must be done with extreme secrecy. Icron apparently has spies everywhere. So let's get packing. Now, just a moment. If you don't mind, uh, there's one more thing I'd like to bring before you. And that is that I've asked Alita to come back with me and be my wife. Certainly. Great Why? idea. Bring her along. Thank you. Am I supposed to say something? Sure, some kind of witty remark. <laughs> Tillamar will accompany us also. Why don't we take a few more people? Carol, I, I'd like to tell you how much I appreciate all you've done. Oh, don't apologize, Jim. I think it's just marvelous to take two live specimens back with us. Well, anybody seen that deck of cards? What do you want with a deck of cards? I feel a game of solitaire coming up. <laughs> Come on. Stuff. The others will be aboard later in the day. Yes, Terrace? I'm worried about the rocket, sir. Something is going on. It looks very suspicious. Why do you think so? First of all, no workmen have been allowed inside the rocket in the last 24 hours. And secondly, the corium tanks, which were to hold fuel for their return, have been moved from the laboratory. You mean they may have been placed in the rocket? Oh, I don't know. Even if they are on the ship, it may mean nothing. But I thought you ought to know. You might want to question one of them. Well, there is one we can question. A girl, Alita. Good. I will bring her here. No, no, no. Not here. In the council room. I will call a meeting at once. Very good, sir. you from somewhere? Girl scientist. Oh, yes. Now I remember. You know, I've been thinking. If we make it back to Earth, I'd like to do a series of articles. Enchanting idea. Very worthwhile. But you see, I, I'm not an author. I'd need a ghostwriter. Do you suppose that How you... How long would it take? Oh, I don't know. Maybe the rest of our lives. If you're kidding, I'll break your neck. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I think you'd make a wonderful collaborator. I'm not happy leaving you here. But think of the adventure before you. I'll miss you. But not for long, my child. And I'm sure you're going to be very happy with him. I think so, too. Are you going aboard the rocket now? Yes. Goodbye, Anita. Tanks are on the rocket ship, but I told you why. The new outlet valves have to be tested. Why are they new? 
The old ones didn't fit. They were damaged during the explosion. You say they cannot possibly be ready for another two weeks for a takeoff. I only know what Jim says, and I heard him say that just yesterday. Everyone else on board? Yes. Well, I'll be off. I'll follow you in 10 minutes. Weren't Lita and Tillamar supposed to meet you here? Yes, that was the plan. They should have been here by now. Jim, are you sure everything is all right? Yes, don't worry about it. It's a long trip. You'd better get started, Doctor. Where's Alita? It's almost time to go. That's what I came to tell you. You must leave immediately while you can. Alita's being held before the council for questioning. Then she and Tillamar are both there. Yes. Tillamar has double-crossed us. There's no proof of that. She may be in danger of her life. Forget Alita. Leave in the rocket while you still can. No. We'll go to the council meeting. Tillamar may even have done something to the rocket. Will you tell us the truth or go online? I suggest we hold her and send our men to seize the rocket at once. The council will vote on it. Wait. If she's telling the truth, what will be gained by seizing the rocket? According to her, it isn't ready to go. And if we take over the rocket now, it may never be ready for flight. We need the Earthmen working on it. If she's lying, it will depart. And we will be left with nothing. I, Kron, I have trust in the things of the universe and in the Creator. You are a naive, fumbling old man. A vote. Icron's plan or Tillema's. It's time for action, not words. Those who favor Icron. Wait! Why are you here? We should request his permission to have our men investigate the rocket. Why should it be investigated at all? What is all this? I have the promise of your help. We have good and just reason for believing that you have betrayed us. If that is so, you will find our generosity is at an end. And the sort of hospitality we will show will have a different taste. A vote. Icron's plan or Tillamar's? Icron. Very well. The rocket is to be seized at once. These people are to be held. <laughs> should have been here long ago. I don't understand it. I do. There's trouble. Something must have gone wrong. I think I see Jim and Tullamore now. With Alita.